Well, hello everybody and welcome to Vlulai day six. As you can see, I am at home. It is the middle of the day. I have been sick all day. I've just had a really bad migraine. So I woke up about one o'clock in the morning with a splitting headache and did the medicine stuff and then woke up at like three and it was worse and I typically wake up at like 4.45, 5 o'clock every morning and I was like, there's just no way I can make it in. Like I could hardly look at my cell phone screen because of the light and all that. So it is about a few minutes to three and this is when I'm normally off at work anyways, but I've been kind of up and around doing things. I took the dog on a walk and got my video published for my vlog and posted a couple of things on Instagram that I needed to post. Today, I thought it would be kind of fun to do a Q&A video. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions. I feel like this is gonna be like a really long video. So grab a snack, let's hang out, and I will answer some of your questions. So let's start with the YouTube questions. Cause at the end of yesterday's video, I had asked um, if you guys had any questions let me know in the comments. So I also did the same thing on Instagram and then most of my Instagrams post to my like favorite daughter Emily Facebook page. So there's a couple of you guys that had put some things on there too. Questions from YouTube. If Doyle could talk, what would he say was the biggest surprise in his new home had to offer? It's worded a little bit weird, but I understand where you're going. I don't know. I mean, all of the furniture besides the dining table and chairs is all stuff that he would remember. So there's really no new furniture. Um, I guess it would probably just be the space in general. He's been kind of just hanging out on the like sofa bed thing and then also like my bed upstairs, which is totally normal. And then his like really creeper spot, he's been hanging out up there too. But right now, he's actually on the sofa bed thing right over there because I'm downstairs. Another question from YouTube. You had mentioned in an older video that you had filed for bankruptcy. Yes, that is true, a long time ago. And another about job loss. Did you ever think you would be owning your own home? I she says, I filed about eight years ago. My husband wants to buy a home, but I'm not sure. How do you overcome that fear? I think a lot of people may have or are going through the same experience. Thank you. Okay, uh, yes, I filed for bankruptcy several years ago. I don't remember the actual year. Let me think back. I think it was 2008 or was it 2009 once it was all done? It took like a really long time. I remember that like once I actually put in the paperwork, it just took a really long time because you had to do, well, when I did it in the state that I lived in, I don't know if it's like different from state to state or whatever. You had to go through like all these classes and stuff and whatever, but um, yeah, so how did I overcome the fear? Hmm, I completely changed the way I saw money after that. I just knew I like never wanted to be in that courtroom ever again. It was like really, really like a humiliating process for myself not to make anyone else feel bad about it. That was just my own like experience with it. I feel like that really opened my eyes that I just shouldn't do stupid stuff anymore because that's really what got me in that. It wasn't like, you know, I had a home and I defaulted on my mortgage and I had these car payments. Like it was just me being stupid and dumb and young and naive and not really understanding anything really about money. So they don't teach you that in school, by the way, which is like insanity. I don't know how schools, including public schools, which is what I went to, don't teach a thing about personal finance at all. Like nothing. <laughs> So I don't know, I guess the way I got over the fear was being consistently, I don't wanna say good with money, but like managing my money well and feeling confident that I could manage my money well, regardless of a job loss or whatever. And the next, the other question she asked is, did you ever think that you'd be owning your own home? Um, yes and no. Yes, I always had the dream to own my own home by myself but I always thought that for some reason, and I think this just comes with, I don't wanna like bring gender into it, but I really feel like this for me personally, and I don't want anyone to take this the wrong way, and if you're starting to write in the comments, just don't. But for me personally, I always felt like I had to have a man, if you will, to save me isn't the right word, but help me along the way. Like I couldn't do it by myself. And I, 
I think that just comes from like my own brain. Like my parents never said that to me and no one ever said that to me. I think it's just like societal things that in my brain, I always just thought like, oh, well I'm this like woman, I can't do it. I, I don't know. I mean, I it's hard to say these things on the internet because I know that it's probably gonna create issues like down in the comments, but that's just genuinely like kind of how I felt for a really long time. And then once I really like got my act together financially and like figured out that I could save money and I could do this and I could not rely on a spouse or a man to take care of me and I could just take care of my own four walls, like it was a very empowering feeling. So I think I just needed to like get over my own problems before I could move forward. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> this is a really great question. When you didn't wanna to stick to a budget, how did you push through the budgeting sucks moment? The way that I thought about it was, do I want, let's just say, I'm gonna go with this sheet of stickers, right? Just, it's sitting here on my dining table. Do I want this sheet of stickers more than I want whatever goal I was trying to attain? So let's say home ownership. No, I don't want this sheet of stickers more than I want home ownership. But if I didn't kind of have a goal and like tell myself in reverse what was happening, I wouldn't have been able to achieve the goal. So like, do I want this top more than I want home ownership? Um, Whatever your dream and goal is, maybe it's to uh, retire early or maybe it's to fund your kid's college or go on a trip or whatever. You have to ask yourself when you're at the grocery store or you're at the, at the shops and you're buying stuff, it's like, do I want this more than this other big thing? And the answer is probably no. So that's the way that I really had to change my mindset when I was, you know, trying to buy things or, um, you know, going through those slums where it's like, oh, I really want that, but mm, maybe I shouldn't, you know. Someone just commented, you should totally do another drunk plan with me. Even my husband ended up watching. <laughs> okay, I will <laughs> at some point. I don't know when, but I've got like four bottles of wine in my um, like wine cabinet thing up there. So I'll have to do it for you one of these days. All right, so next question. Um, where is my favorite place to vacation? Honestly, the only place I go to vacation is Florida. I like it because my parents are there. I mean, they're here right now, but my parents are there. And then I also have extended family. So I have my aunt and some cousins and their spouses and their kids and stuff. So that's always fun. But I don't have a place to like vacation vacation to just like do nothing, I guess. So I don't, I don't know. I'm like so boring. Um, then someone also asked uh, about the food place closing down and saying, is there a reason why they're closing? Um, yes. So it's a family owned and operated business and has been since like the inception of it. The original, not the original owner, but the owner that owns it right now, um, that's really like not his passion in life is to own and run a restaurant, even though it's, you know, successful. Um, so really no one else in the family wanted it and, you know, had the desire to take it over. Everybody else has different passions and he wanted to open up a martial arts studio, which he has been doing on the side for quite a long time, but he is making the jump to doing that now full time. And then, you know, essentially dumping the business. So they didn't actually sell the business. They sold the building, the new restaurant that's going in there. It's another restaurant that's going in. Um, is not gonna be serving Chinese food. I don't know what kind of food they're gonna be serving, but it's not Chinese, I, I know that. So let's go to Instagram. And there is a lot, there's like 40 questions already and I just posted this like a couple of hours ago. Okay, you guys, come on. All right, ooh, this is a doozy. First one out of the gate. My first question is why don't you wanna have kids? Okay, let's put the phone down for this. Um, hmm. Let's see here. I don't wanna have kids because I've never had the desire to. And to be completely honest, I'm a big believer that even though you can, doesn't mean that you should in a lot of things in life, not just children. I've never seen myself as a mom and I've never seen myself with kids. Like that was just kind of something that like didn't fit in my world like and i know that's really difficult for a lot of women to understand because i think a lot of women are like kind of like what i was talking about earlier like i feel like we're kind of like pre-programmed and have these ideals in our brains and things get ingrained in us and you know sometimes you gotta just like get over the stereotype and make your own decision 
and um, I did that very, very early on. Um, when I was in high school, I always thought, okay, I would get married and I'd be a mom and that's just the way it would be. And then there was like a shift that happened about when I was, I think like a 17, 18, 19, 20, like somewhere in there where I was just like, this seems like so undesirable to me. And I don't want to offend any like mothers or fathers out there, but I just, I couldn't see myself having children ever. So I hope that makes sense. It's it's difficult to describe. Oh, and she also asked, if you were to find a soulmate who wants kids, what would you do at that point? Um, we wouldn't be together. That's what would happen. We just wouldn't be together. That's like if somebody says, well, I want to live in Australia. And then I say, well, I want to live in Alaska. Okay. Well, either we're going to compromise on something or we're not, you know, I guess it really just depends. Um, I have had a relationship like that where the guy I was dating for, I think we were together for like three years. And I was in my 20s at the time, so I was like, oh, maybe I want to have kids. Like, I don't know. Like, I didn't really, like, stand up for myself enough in that, and I probably should have. But in the end, it was all about the relationship moving forward, and he wanted to get engaged and get married and have kids, and I was just like, whoa, and like, no thank you. He went off and got married and had kids, and that's what he did after that, and I'm very happy for him because he got absolutely everything that he wanted out of life, and I had to kind of like let him go. I mean, I, I loved him, and I still have like love for him in a platonic way, but I knew I couldn't give him what he needed from me, you know? Like, if, if that's what he really wanted out of life, like, I wanted him to have that because I cared about him. So if there was someone that came into my life, I mean, that would honestly be one of the first conversations that I would have with them is about children. And I'm also 36, which means that if I were to find somebody right now, which I'm not dating, but if I were to find somebody right now and say, it takes two, three years to figure out if you want to be together forever, I'm almost 40 at that point, so it becomes increasingly difficult to birth your own children. Not to say at 36 it might not be possible for me. I don't know. I've never, I've never inquired, I guess. But I have had friends that have had a lot of fertility issues even earlier in life than I am in right now. So it's, it's just not something that I desire at all. Someone asked, what's the most awkward question you get asked? In my normal daily life, why are you single and why don't you have kids? Like something is wrong with me, like I'm a leper or I've like got like horrible things going on with my life and I'm just like a loser um, because you know everybody's doing it so why aren't you doing it? Um, someone asked celebrity crush. Uh, I don't really have one. I don't know. I don't like watch enough TV and movies to like have a crush. I don't know. I don't know if I would freak out. I probably wouldn't say anything because I'm just that person that just like doesn't say anything and I've, I have, my mom can attest to this in the comments if she comments on this. But I have met tons and tons of different like celebrities and movie star people and I don't know, just random people in my life. And I just kind of don't care. Like, I feel like they're normal people and if you can be normal around them, it's a little bit easier for them. Like, if I were in their shoes and doing a job that they do, you know, the immense pressure that they're under, whether they're like a sports person, which I don't know anything about sports anyway, or like, you know, in movies, TV, whatever. The last thing I would want is in my downtime, say when I'm out somewhere or going and buying something or at a hotel or whatever, is someone walking up to me and freaking out. I would just be like, ah, but I'm just kind of an awkward person anyway, <laughs> but which is why I'm not a celebrity at all and nor would I ever want to be a celebrity. But I feel like the more normal you can be around somebody, if you meet them, the better that it is, even if you're freaking out inside. But I think if I ever met, I don't know, like I don't have like one person that I'd be like, oh my gosh, I totally freak out. I would just be like, oh, that's cool. Like, I don't know. I mean, we're not, like I have this, I don't have like this fantasy brain where it's like, oh, if I meet this person, we're gonna be best friends forever and we're gonna like exchange phone numbers and braid each other's hair. Like, 
no, like that is not going to happen. It's, there's just like absolutely no way. So that's a hard question. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, let's see, next question. Have any of your viewers stopped you or recognized you in person besides uh, Jody from Life's Orna Organized Chaos or people at the planner crawl? So like the planner crawls, like the Minnesota meetups. Yes, actually one time. And I thought maybe I'd met her before or something. It was at the Dave Ramsey event, that marriage and money event that was hosted by Les Parrott and Rachel Cruz. I was a volunteer there and I had like put that in my plan with me this gal came up and said hello to me And I thought maybe she was a volunteer, but she wasn't like wearing the volunteer like t-shirts that we got So I was like do I know her so she was like hi my name is you know blah 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 and I'm like, okay Hi, like I thought maybe I had like seen her before already because people were like starting to come in and I was at the booth That was like selling all the merchandise So like the Rachel Coors wallet and like all the books and like the CDs and DVD packages and stuff So I was like well, maybe she came up here before and I just I don't remember Remember. Well, then at the end she tells me like oh, I'm a viewer I've been watching you for a while and then it started to get like really busy So then I wasn't able to like talk to her so I felt kind of bad, but that's the only time next question is what is your favorite splurge meal? Definitely dragon house someone also asked are you interested in dating and do you date? Um, am I interested in dating? Sure. Uh, do I date? No I know the follow-up question is probably why but they didn't ask and I will probably answer why right now The why is I haven't found anybody that's worth going on a date with I feel like once you're my age I'm like I said before I'm 36 the pool gets like smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller because most people my age are married or they're just getting out of a relationship or they're getting divorced or just got divorced and they're just looking for another mother for their children and I'm not that because they already have a mom you know like if I want to be your partner I want to be your partner you know if you've got kids I don't have a problem with that but I'm not a replacement mother because they already have one and she lives down the road you know like I don't, I put my myself in those kids' shoes. I wouldn't want that for them, even though I don't know them, like, I don't know. So I guess, in short, if I were to find somebody that was worth spending my time with, sure, I would date, but I haven't found that, so if you know of anybody, well, let me know. All right, so the next question is, did you keep a credit card to build credit to buy your house while you were saving? Um, yes and no. I did keep a credit card. My credit card is still currently open. I need to close that. Um, I haven't used it since I put the offer in on my home that I'm currently sitting in. So it's been several months since I've actually used it. And what I would use it for is one tank of gas in my car a month, and that was it. So my credit card bill was usually about $20 to $30, depending on the place I filled up and how much gas was at the time. The reason I did that is because I started looking in December and I knew probably within that next calendar year I was going to be purchasing a home but I didn't want to close my credit card because it takes it can take anywhere there's no real formula that's the issue some statistics say it can take six months to get your credit score down to zero some of them say it takes two years so I didn't want to go in with like a 200 credit score and like not get approved for a loan so I just decided to keep it I would say if it's like if you're about two years or more out from, or like a year and a half to two years out from buying a home, and I actually responded to somebody's private email today about the same question, is I would close all my credit accounts if I didn't need them and um, just say goodbye to the plastic, just say goodbye to it. And then you can go to a place like Churchill Mortgage, which is where I went, and they can do a manual underwriting on you. You know, you're not gonna be able to go to like a normal bank to get a mortgage, but that's okay. It doesn't, there's other places that do the manual underwriting because that's what they used to do back in the day before, you know, credit scores and all that good stuff. Is your nephew Jackson Phil's son? Yes, he is. Oh, this person says, you have to jump on a plane right now. Where to first? I don't know. Um, eh. how did you decide on getting a Shiba? What's your favorite characteristic of a Shiba? Um, the reason, okay, so a long time ago, I did a video of like a doggy Q&A or something. If I can find it, I'll post it down below for you guys. Answers all the questions about the dog. My high school boyfriend, his name is Jay. Hello, Jay, if you're watching. I don't think he watches, but um, maybe his family watches. I don't know. 
but they had a Shiba Inu growing up and um, in high school we dated and he had this nice little dog named Merlin, which was a Doyle dog, the same color and everything. And he was just the nicest dog. He was just very respectful and just very chill and a very cat-like, which I liked. Um, I had a lot of other friends that had dogs that were just very aggressive and jumped up on you. And I didn't have animals growing up, so I didn't like, that kind of freaked me out. Um, and I knew I didn't, wasn't like a fan of cats. Sorry to all the cat people out there, but I just, I just knew I wasn't a fan of cats. When I met Merlin for the first time, I was like, this dog's cool. And then Jay and I dated kind of like off and on for a few years in high school. I mean, we were friends first. We were friends for several years before we ever dated. So I knew of Merlin and I'd been to his house before and met Merlin and all of that. That's how I decided on a Shiba Inu. And what's my favorite characteristic? Probably because they're, I probably like them a lot because they're very independent and they don't need a lot of, um, I'm gonna say work. Uh, like Doyle right now is sitting on the couch just lounging. So I, I really like that about Shibas, that they're very independent and they kind of just like do their own thing. <laughs> this next person says, do you get fed up of people constantly asking why you're single? <laughs> I know I do and I really enjoy being on my own, which seems to freak people out for some reason. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's irritating. And the most irritating part is like, having to explain it to, you know, grandparents or like aunts and uncles or cousins or whatever that just don't understand it because they're in a, you know, relationship. And I mean, and I feel like everybody in a relationship wants you to be in a relationship, at least the people in my life. And because they want you to have what they have, like I'm missing out on something, but I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm fine. Like I'm okay with the choices I've made in life. Like it's, I'm, I'm good, okay? <laughs> And this gal says, you can star in any film ever made. Which one and what character? And she says, I'd be Scarlett O'Hara. Well, if this says anything about me, uh, my favorite movie of all time is Silence of the Lambs, but I would not want to be Clary Starling. So I guess that answers that question. <laughs> uh, another gal asks, are you planning on making any career moves or are you happy with your current job? Super random question, I know, but I love watching your videos, seeing how organized you are and how you get shit done is super motivating for me. Well, thanks. Um, as of right now, I am happy with my current job. Um, I am a person that says never say never. I don't know, I don't know where I'm gonna end up. I have no idea, but we'll see. <laughs> Someone asks, what's your favorite store to shop at? Target, of course. What is your favorite and or least favorite thing about living alone? Um, my most favorite thing about living alone is I can do whatever I want whenever I want. And my least favorite thing, I mean, I guess maybe not, I don't have someone to like share the responsibilities with, with like, like general home maintenance, I guess. I don't know, but I don't need that. Uh, someone asked, why did you choose your YouTube name, favorite daughter Emily? I'm guessing it's a family nickname. You are right. Uh, my mom and dad, have myself and my brother. So they have a favorite daughter and a favorite son. And they have called me that my whole life and they've called my brother that his whole life. And it's kind of a joke. So that's where the name came from. How has it, if at all, your planning style changed over the years? When do you think you finally found your groove? That is a good question. Um, so decorative planning is what I'm sure that you're talking about. In the fall of 2015, maybe? Whenever I started planning, I can't remember. It was a couple of years back. So yeah, 2015. As soon as I got my first Chrissy Ann Designs stickers, I will leave her um, link below. I definitely found my groove into functional stuff. Before then I was just doing like fun little cutesy things and it, like it just really wasn't working for me. And then I found Chrissy Ann Designs and everything changed and I still love Chrissy Ann Designs and I use her all the time, but I have found other sticker shops and really just like gotten into my groove of what I like and what I, you know, prefer and all of that. Really uh, what helped me along. Also following Instagram, like anyone on Instagram that does planning and shows their pictures and stuff, follow them and see what your style is and try it out. I mean, you try it out for the week and if you don't like it, you know, move on to something else. Uh, why did you pick the name Doyle for your doggo? Does it have any significance? Yes, okay, so the guy I was dating at the time when I got Doyle was a huge poker fan. So he would watch incessantly the World Series poker. There's this old dude with a big cowboy hat on named Doyle Brunson. And I always knew that I wanted, cause Doyle was my dog and he always was my dog, but my boyfriend at the time had 
some say in the name and I originally wanted to name him Marvin he didn't like the name Marvin and I really wanted like an old man name and so we were watching the World Series of Poker like we do all the time or like we did all the time I guess I should say and um, Doyle Brunson came up on the screen and I was like what about Doyle and he's like yeah I like that name so that's actually how we got his name was from Doyle Brunson where will you and Jody be meeting now that the Dragon House is closing I don't know we talked about it last night her vote is here she wants to meet at my place because she wants to like check out all the stuff in person <laughs> so I don't know I think my place for right now I don't know uh, next question what is your dream job my dream job would be to be doing this full-time YouTube I think this would be awesome to just share my life and experiences and build this community and I think that would be a really cool job next question is do you use your monthly view of your planner we wear rarely see it well there's a reason you don't see it it's because I don't use it so that's why are you going to get a second dog now that you have your own place no what is your favorite craft slash planner store in Minnesota Probably Crafts Direct in Waite Park. I will put their link down below if you'd like to take a peek. If a movie were made about your life, who would you want to play you and why? Oh, it's such a hard question. I don't know. I have no idea. So this one kind of asks similar questions, kind of. There's a lot of questions. Okay, first question. Why don't you want any children? I already answered that. Is that hard explaining it to men? No because I say, I don't want any children, and then we either proceed or we don't proceed, I guess. Do you go on dates? I already answered that. Why did you meet Jackson so late in his life? Okay, well, let's talk about this. I didn't know Jackson existed until a couple of months after he was born. My brother was out of the state. Heidi was pregnant with Jackson, and then also when Jackson was born. Um, I was also living in North Dakota out of the state. My brother had still never met Jackson either So I felt that it would be kind of weird if I was the first person to meet Jackson That was kind of like my brother's job to meet his son for the first time. You know what I mean? So I waited until Phil actually met Jackson to then meet Jackson. So yeah that's why. Oh, and then she also said, what happened to painting your nails? Uh, life happened, and I haven't painted my nails in a really long time, but hopefully I can start getting back into it uh, once I get the house settled and everything. Next question, do you still have a good amount of savings after purchasing your first home? Yes, I still have six months worth of expenses in my savings account, and I ain't gonna touch it. Someone asked, what were you like in high school? Do you miss it? What was I like? I don't know. I was odd, and I was quirky, and... I was friendly, but I was weird, and I was outgoing. I don't know, I guess I was me like I am right now, but like really, really excited. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's kind of like what I was like in high school. And do I miss it? Um, no, I don't miss high school. However, I miss parts of it, I guess. I wish sometimes I could go back knowing what I know now, but I think if I knew what I knew now, I would have had like no friends because I would have just had like a piss poor attitude about everything. So I don't know. I mean, I had a good time. It was fine. I was in activities and had friends and eh, whatever. It was fine. Someone asked, do you use a separate planner to stay on track at work? Yes, I do. I use an hourly Erin Condren and that helps me stay on track at work. I rarely actually show it um, because there's so much like client, personal client information on there and phone numbers and stuff that I can't really share it unless I like blur out 90% of it. So meh. have you thought about using a planner besides Erin Condren? Maybe a happy planner? No, not really. I used like a, what was it? A day timer, like an A5 or something back in the day, like way before this like decorative planning thing kind of like took off. Like I'm talking about like 15 so years ago and I used one of those for a really long time and then I had watched uh, Jennifer Ross on Pretty Neat Living for years like I started watching her like the first year that she started YouTube and then she got into Erin Condren and I had like lurked for a long time and then I was like well maybe I should buy one and then I did and then it's like then you guys know the rest of it because you saw all of it because it's all on the internet so no I've never thought about purchasing a different planner because it, it works for me um, if it wasn't working for me, then yes, I would seek out a different planner for sure. And if it's if Erin Condren isn't working for you, go look for another planner because the whole idea with your planner is you want it to work for you and your lifestyle. And if it doesn't work, it's not 
it's not worth it. So it's time to move on. Next question, is there anything you have not bought slash done because you were trying to save money that you regret not purchasing? No, I don't remember anything specifically that I was you know, upset or regretted not buying because I was saving up for a home or saving up for things, not at all. I don't even remember, <laughs> to be completely honest. It probably would have been like that shirt I saw at the store or, you know, something at the grocery store, like something where I was like, ooh, that's not really in the budget, but should I? It's like, no, it's not worth going $5, $5 in the hole on my grocery budget for this and not, you know, getting further and getting more traction into my home. And yes, it's only $5, but if I say that every single week or every single day or whatever, no, I ain't gonna do that. And then my friend Kristen <laughs> puts in these comments and she says, how bad do you want crack pickles? And I want them very bad, Kristen. Um, and she says, who's your favorite person in Boston? Well, uh, me so, obviously. <laughs> Don't tell Saki, okay? And then <laughs> she says, if you could sports all the sports, which sports would you sport? <laughs> God. Oh, Kristen, you're too much. I can't handle it. So Kristen's my friend that I went to visit out in Boston last summer. And um, we've been friends for years and she's got two Shebas. But um, yeah, she knows about my affinity for not sports. <laughs> I don't know anything. And her husband is like some baseball guy. I don't, I don't know. He like played baseball in college or something. So we like watched, I think we were watching, yeah, it was baseball that we were watching um, on TV when I was there and he, you know, he was like trying to explain things to me and it's just like over my head, like, I don't know. And then we did go to a Boston Red Sox game, which was fun and we got to drink. So that was a good time. And uh, I got burnt there too. So yeah. But yeah, if I could sports all the sports, which sports would you sport? I'd probably sport NASCAR because I know, I know a little bit about NASCAR. So I think, I think that's what the sport would be. Ah, this is a good question. Now that you've purchased your home, what big ticket item will you save for next? That is a wonderful question. I have like actually two part answer for you. I am gonna be purchasing probably in the next, well, sometime this month, I will be purchasing full bed and frame. So I need to do that because I have a guest coming to stay at the very end of the month and I wanna have my guest room set up for her. So, but that's not like crazy expensive. That's gonna be like a few hundred dollars. Like that's not thousands of dollars. Um, so my next things I wanna save up for is I wanna get a like leather reclining couch for my living room right over there. The ones I've been looking at are anywhere from like 1400 to like 2400. So I'm guesstimating about 2000 for that. I don't really know. Also a friend of mine is an electrician. So I'm gonna have him come over probably in the fall. Um, I wanna live here for a little while and he's gonna switch out some of the outlets for me and also put in some different lighting fixtures and maybe put in new lighting fixtures in places that I don't have lighting. Um, but that's probably gonna cost quite a bit, just even in supplies. Like obviously I'm gonna pay him for his labor too, but it'll probably take him a day to get everything done. But then we need to like go to the store together and then I can buy all the stuff. I'm not hiring like a company electrician, like I'm just hiring him for the day. So I've already talked to him about it this past summer and said like, hey, would you be interested? And he's like, absolutely, yeah, I'll just come there for the day and you know, if you wanna feed me, that's cool. I'm like, well, I'm gonna like pay you money, but yeah, that's fine. So those are the two things I'm kind of saving up for right now with the home and um, that's really it. There's nothing, nothing else I can think of at the moment. Uh, someone asked, are you still planning on having a renter? No, um, I was planning on having a renter if I had a three bedroom, but I only have a two bedroom, so no. And then they say, how do you set goals and plan? Um, the best thing I can tell you to do, um, you're probably looking for some advice maybe, uh, is to write down goals. If you write down your tangible goals, I feel like the goals are more likely to happen that way. And that's really what's helped me over the years. And then also think it out. You know, if you get paid, say in a month you get $2,000, for example, and that's your take home pay. If you wanna save up for something that's $10,000, you might not be able to do that in six months. So, so don't make your goals completely unattainable, make them realistic. And then, you know, kind of divide it out by how many months you have to save up for it, 
or what your big goals are in mind and things like that and maybe that'll be a little bit more helpful for you but i feel like if you put pen to paper and write it down it's more likely to happen versus like some pipe dream that you're just kind of thinking about like oh well maybe i want to do this maybe i want to go on this trip maybe i want to do this in my life it's like just write it down and make a plan and do it do you have a bucket list if so what's the one thing you would look forward to I do want to go to Alaska. There are some plans to possibly go to Alaska next year with my mom and aunt. So that's definitely a bucket list item. I don't really have anything else on the bucket list. I do want to travel and I do want to go to like Europe and do some things over there. I don't know what. I really would love to go to like Australia someday. I think that would be really cool. Basically traveling would be on my bucket list, but I just have like a whole laundry list of places that I would love to go. I need somebody to go there with, you know what I mean? So let's go to Facebook. There's a few, oh my gosh, there's so many more questions on Facebook. Oh crap. This video is gonna be so long. I'm so sorry, you guys. Oh, this is a good question. Where did you get your decorating inspiration for your new place? You were clearly organized and methodical about it. What is the process for inspiration slash planning slash implementation well that's a good question so my decorating inspiration really came from years ago makeup by Tiffany D I will put her channel link below as well as her blog below I believe her blog is still up but she used to blog about home decor like all the time and I loved her style so much and in several of her blog posts and I think videos about you know home decor and stuff she talked a lot about that she gets sick of things really fast and I'm the same way. So she would choose neutral decor so anything in any room could go into another room and kind of refresh it so she doesn't have to spend a ton of money, you know, redoing a room. So say if she's got, uh, you know, her guest room is like purples and blues or something, if she's got another room that's like reds and oranges, like that kind of wouldn't like intermingle with each other. So she chose really neutral decor, like whites, browns, creams, tans, grays, etc. And so she just like refreshes a room by just moving stuff around. And I love that idea because I'm on a budget, as you know, and I wanna make sure that I really love all the stuff that I'm bringing into my home. And if for some reason I end up getting sick of it at some point, I might be able to just move it around and give it some, you know, breathe some new life into it, I guess. That's why I choose pretty neutral stuff. Plus, you know, just the Instagram culture, I guess, of the way things look. I mean, I don't have any kids, nor do I want any, so um, I don't mind having a, a white sofa or like a white table or something. Like, I'm not super worried about, you know, messing it up myself. I mean, maybe I'll mess it up someday, but not today. Uh, let's see, have you been contributing to a 401k or is that your next baby step? I had contributed to a 401k when I was at my previous employer. My current employer does not offer a 401k or retirement program. That is my next step. So by the end of the year, I will start contributing again. And then she asked, have you been recognized as the favorite daughter when you're out? I've already answered that. Uh, where do your parents live in the winter? They div live in Deland, Florida. All right, so someone asked, how do you watch live TV with no cable? Does your new antenna pick them up? Also, how did you clear your credit and keep up with current bills? Okay, um, all right, so I haven't really been watching my television to be completely honest. I don't watch a lot of TV, so that's why I got the little, like, flat antenna thing. I'm pretty sure I need to put like an antenna on top of my home. Um, other people have done it in my community, so obviously you can do it. So the antenna that I currently have doesn't pick up anything very well. I think I need that external antenna like on the top of my roof, but I don't know, we'll fi I'll figure that out. Um, and it says also, how do you clear your credit and keep up with current bills? I guess I'm not understanding the question. Clear your credit. Does that mean get your credit score down to zero? Um, if it means put your credit score down to zero, that just means that you have to close all your credit card accounts, but you can't close them until you have everything paid off. Um, and then how do I keep up on current bills? Um, I track everything. So um, I track all my bills and all of my spending and um, I do all of that on my Money Talk playlist, which I will put down below for you if you'd like to watch. And then how did you decide on a Sheba versus any other breeds? Um, already answered that one. Places you've lived in or places you would like to live in. Um, I've actually lived in North Carolina before and I really loved it and I would 
absolutely love to retire there again. I lived in a town named Wilmington and I had just the best time there and it was this cute little coastal beachy town and I would love to retire there someday. And someone else asked about the TV. I would love, I want to know what you use to get cable and what shows you watch. Well, I don't have cable um, and what shows I watch, I don't really watch a lot of TV. I, I did watch last year This Is Us and I'll probably watch that when it comes back, but um, you can watch it on the like NBC app or online like in an hour after it airs, so. Everybody's asking about the TV. What channels do you get with your antenna? My, my antenna thing doesn't really work right now because I don't have the external antenna. Someone asked dream vacation location. Um, if and she says if all expenses were paid, of course. I would love to go to like the French Polynesian and stay in one of those like overwater like bungalow little tiki huts. I don't know, are those like little huts? I don't think they're, they're probably not tiki huts, but they're just like those little huts. That would be kind of cool. Um, do you ever regret starting a YouTube channel? No, I actually regret not starting it sooner. It's taken me years <laughs> to get comfortable in front of the camera and be talking to a little black box like I am right now. And it's weird, it's it's weird sitting here talking to nobody and if someone walked in, they'd be like, what are you doing? No, I guess I don't regret ever starting the YouTube channel. I do, from time to time, end up having to delete comments and block users and things like that because they just say kind of hateful things. And I don't care if they say hateful things about me. It's when the audience gets involved. I don't want a lot of hate going towards that person, if that makes sense. So I will delete Instagram comments because I see people not necessarily engaging with them, but saying things about the other, I don't know. I just want a community of positivity. That's all I want. So from time to time, I will end up deleting and blocking people um, if they've just got like nothing constructive to say and all that's happening is people are ganging up on them and it's like, just, be done. I'm done. I'm done. Let's see. Next question. How did you end up in Fargo? Um, it was a job offer. So that's how I ended up there. Uh, dream job. This. Um, my longest romantic relationship. Three, three and a half years. Never gone longer than that. I don't know. It's like I hit the three year mark and you know, and then it just like all goes downhill. <laughs> Uh, what are your must-haves for planning? Stickers and washi. <laughs> Top five all-time favorite shows or movies? Ooh. Well, I already talked about Silence of the Lambs. That was a good one. Uh, TV shows, My Soul Called Life. Anyone that's a 90s kid will know all about that. That was a good one. Dawson's Creek, of course. Loved Felicity. And like I watch that back now, Felicity, because it's on, or I watched the whole season again because it's on Netflix. And man, that show is whiny. I never really realized that, but anyway. Um, but I still love it. I still love it. Um, so what, that's four things, another one. Sons of Anarchy, I really, really liked, and I'm really sad that that's done now, but yeah. And then it says, does Sir Doyle shed? Oh my God, yes. He sheds like a madman. And the next question is boyfriend crushes? <laughs> no and no. So I think that is going to be it. Um, my battery light is flashing, so I am gonna say goodbye. But before I do, let's go see the Doyle dog. Oh, there he is. There he is. Mm, battery, stay with me. There's the Doyle dog. What you doing, Doyle? Anyway, well, I am gonna go. Thank you guys so much for watching Blue Lie Day 6. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, put them down below. All the things that I talked about will be down below. Sorry, this was such a long video, but I wanted to get through all your questions. So there you go. Hopefully I'll have a regular Blue Lie video for you tomorrow and you can walk around with me and do some laundry because it's Friday tomorrow. Yay! But I'm gonna jet. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!